But for Alex, rest was more like a nightmare. Upstairs in her room, she told herself that there was no basis, no basis whatever for her state of mind. Still the turmoil, the doubt, the odd, unaccountable sense of dread persisted and grew. Grew until, softly, she opened a door, stepped out upon the upstairs hallway. Quite clearly, she knew what she must do. Knew she must find some testimony to her husband's past. Something to reassure her, something to kill that agonizing dread mounting within her. And strangely, she remembered that single locked drawer in Gerald's bureau. She tiptoed to the door at the head of the stairs, opened it, and entered her husband's room. The key. If only she could find the key to that locked drawer. But there was none in sight. She moved to the clothes closet, went through his coat pockets, and then there, at her feet, there on the floor, she saw it. Swiftly, she stepped to the bureau and searched the key. drawer, save a roll of ancient faded newspaper clippings. Alex sighed with relief as she glanced at the top clipping. It was from an American paper, and it featured the trial of one Charles Lemaitre, a notorious swindler and bigamist. A skeleton had been found beneath the floor of his house, and most of the women he'd married had never been heard of again. Another of the clippings described Lemaitre's behavior in court, his occasional collapses from a weak heart. A sensational escape from prison. Another displayed his picture. A long bearded, scholarly looking fellow. It reminded her of someone. But who? She couldn't tell. She glanced at the caption beneath the picture. Modern Bluebeard. Modern Bluebeard. That's what she read. Her eyes went back to the picture. In a flash, they saw the resemblance. She ran through the other clippings. Dates had been found in the man's pocket diary. Dates, it was convention, when he'd done away with his victim. He was an amateur photographer. He was from Sydney. From Canada. He was... He was... Dick had tried to warn her. Dick had been near her that morning. She turned him away. She... It was then that she noticed the sound. She turned toward the bright new pipe in the corner running up through the room. From below, near its base, something was striking that pipe. As though someone were... That was it. Digging. As though someone were digging. Lemaitre was preparing the dark room for the latest one of his victims. Six o'clock. Six o'clock. That was the date. Six o'clock. Less than an hour from now. Suddenly, all the jigsaw pieces shot into place. The money paid for the house. Her money. Her money only. The bond she'd entrusted to his keeping. The... And suddenly, she heard no sound. The digging had stopped. She must escape from that house at once before he came up. The clippings. Uh, b- back in the drawer. Uh, Don't lock it. Don't bother. Just get away. She rushed to the door. Out onto the hall. Stopped. Frozen. Gerald. Yes, my dear. Oh, you... You startled me. I was just trying to find your nail file. Were you, my dear? Well, there's nothing to look so guilty about now, is it? You better come down. It's getting late, you know. Gerald... I just have time to make the coffee and sandwiches. Before we do the pictures, that is. I'll be right down, darling. As soon as... Oh, but we really mustn't delay, must we? Coming, Alex? Very well. Now, that's better. Here, let me give you a hand. Never mind, Gerald. Oh, Alex, how cold you are. Cold? Yes, I... I am rather... Well, that will soon pass away, I'm sure. Hurry along, dear. Hurry along? Oh, yes. Into the kitchen. Alex, what is the matter? Oh, nothing. I'll be all right. The kitchen. Yes, I'll, I'll fix us something in a second. You just sit here in the living room and... No. No, the porch. That'll be more comfortable, won't it? 
I'll be right with you. Splendid, Alex. I'll just... Why, no. Of course not. What, Gerald? How rotten of me not to have suggested it. Since you're feeling a bit under par, you could probably do with some help. I'll come with you. She knew then that some way, somehow, she must get word to Dick Winterford. The fact that he might be gone by now, the memory of him telling her so, she resolutely put out of her mind. There must be no more panic. She must be in utter control of herself. Alex, carrying the coffee out to the porch, glanced at the clock on the mantel. Ten minutes till six. Her very life hung by those next ten minutes, by her ability to think coolly and swiftly, because... Standing beside her was a man as determined as he was insane. You pity her so abstracted, my dear. What? Why do you say that? Because you're missing the loveliest sight you're ever likely to see again. Look out beyond the garden. First, soft shades of twilight. <laughs> twilight over Philomel Cottage. Oh, I say, Alex, you are below par. What do you mean? First time you've ever slipped on the coffee, you must have tossed in the entire canister. Oh, uh, I'll be more careful after this. Oh, dear, that, that reminds me. Alex, where are you going? Oh, nothing to get excited about, Gerald. I forgot to order meat for tomorrow. I'm just going to phone the butcher. The butcher this time of evening? He generally stays late on Wednesdays. I'll be right back, darling. Don't shut the door, Alex. It keeps the insects out of the living room. You're not afraid I'm going to make love to the butcher, are you? Operator, operator, get me to Traveler's Arms, please, hurry. Hello, Traveler's Arms. Mr. Winterford, please, will you... What? You don't know if he's still there. Oh, we'll see, won't you? It's most important that I... Gerald. Don't let me disturb you. Well, darling, you do, I... I hate anyone listening when I telephone. <laughs> but I do, Gerald, really. You're quite sure you're really calling the butcher? Hello? Well, as a matter of fact, I'm not sure. What? Hello? What I mean is, I'm afraid I got the wrong person. A perfect stranger. I don't understand. Someone I know nothing about. Someone you know nothing about? Then why don't you hang up? Here, who's at the end of that wire? Let me... Hello? Hello. Hmm. It's dead. All right, my girl. Might as well get started. We're late now. Late? For the picture? It's precisely three minutes past six. Why, Gerald, it won't be six o'clock for eight minutes. Uh, look at the clock there on the mantel. I don't go by that relic. I go by my own wristwatch. Gerald, listen. Stop pacing and listen to me. I, I don't feel up to it tonight. I'm upset and tired. Alex, I promise you, you won't be a bit tired after it's over. Now, I'm not going to wait one minute longer. I won't do it. I'm not coming with you. Come him. along, Alex, or I'll carry you there. No, no. You will? Do you hear your will? Gerald, stop it. Stop it. I... Gerald. Gerald, I've got something to tell you. Something to confess. To confess? Yes, to confess. Something I ought to have told you before. I... I've had my secret past, too. <laughs> Former lover, I suppose. In a way, yes. But something else. You'd call it... Yes, I expect you'd call it a crime. A crime? You? I don't believe it. You'd better sit down, Gerald. There. I told you I'd never been married before. That was not entirely true. There was a marriage when I was 22. He was an elderly man with a little property. I induced him to ensure his life in my favor. At one time, I was a nurse, you know, with access to a number of poisons. Uh, there's one poison, a white powder. It... You know something about poisons, perhaps, Gerald? No, I know very little about them. Well, this one is very much like hyacinth, absolutely untraceable. Any doctor would give a certificate of heart failure. And that... 
No. No, I can't tell you. Another time, Gerald, I... I can't go on with this. Uh, now, I want to hear. Very well. I always made his coffee for him. One evening, I put a pinch of this alkaloid in his cup. I remember that evening. How very much like this it was. How peaceful. Gasped a little. Tried to move from his chair. He couldn't. Presently, he died. How much was the insurance money? About 2,000 pounds. I speculated and lost it. It was over two years before I married again. He was a much younger man, quite well off. There was a will in my favor. He liked me to make his coffee, too, just as my first husband had done. I make very good coffee. Alex. It was the same, along about twilight. I remember it perfectly, how nervous and upset I'd been all day, wondering if it would turn out all right. The coffee. But it did. It was the same as the other. He just sat there in his chair. He died. Our village doctor pronounced it heart failure. My husband did have a weak heart, you see, and that helped a great deal. Alex, listen. That netted me over 4,000 pounds. I didn't speculate for that. I can't... That's why I taste it that way. You devil, you poisoned me. You poisoned me. I'll kill you. Yes. I'll kill you. Yes, I poisoned you. And already the poison is working. You see, you can't move from your chair. You're lying. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. You can't move. You're helpless. I'll kill you. I'll kill Alex. Alex, where are you? Oh, here. Nick. Oh. Nick. What have they done to you, Alex? Oh, Constable, Nick. go see what's been happening in that room. Right oh, there. you came, Nick. You heard me. Oh, silly girl. Oh, Nick. When you went to the trouble to call oh. me up and talk about someone you knew oh. nothing about. Oh. I certainly knew enough to come. Excuse me, sir. What did you find, Constable? Men sitting in a chair. Heart trouble, it looks like. Yes? Mm. Well, sir, he's dead. Your husband, ma'am? You might say a perfect stranger. He was just sitting in his chair... Presently, he died. So ends Philomel Cottage, Agatha Christie's story of Love from a Stranger, and tonight's story of Suspense. Suspense is produced and directed by William Spear. Tonight's radio drama was written by Harold Medford and scored by Bernard Herman. Alice Frost, one of radio's most accomplished heroines, was Alex Martin, and Eric Dressler was her ominous husband. Barry Kroger was narrator, and others in the cast were Alfred Shirley and Dick Widmark. Next week at this time, Columbia will bring you another selected story from the world's great literature of thrills. Another study... In suspense. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.